This could be a really crap bit of content because I know people don't like anecdotes. So before we pull the trigger on this video, let's go do this little test. Check the scrubber out. Oh yeah, we got a bit of content on our hands. Welcome back to the Friday vlog series as I demonstrate to you what I do every other morning. Get the kids lunches ready and do breakfast, don't I Rubes? Hang on! And in this video, which is brought to you by Squarespace, thank you very much for supporting my work. We're going to split it into two parts. Rubes, you waiting for me? No. Are we walking together today? So part number one, I've got a bit of a bone to pick with Giant regarding the Propel. There is a very minor upgrade required to make this bike so much better and it just feels like a massive oversight. So I can walk without the camera. Part number two of this video, <laughs> the kids are letting me walk them to school bike, today, which I'm very happy about it. it. Number two is, I want to talk to you about a mistake I've made with this YouTube channel. I just want to talk about it. So let's get into it. So part number one of this video, my bone to pick with Giant. And can I firstly just say, I have no affiliation with Giant. Yes, I have over the past three to four years contacted them many times to see if I can get my hands on one of their magnificent machines. Yo. Yeah, g'day, Greg from Giant. Yeah, mate, it's Greg. Yeah, it's Cam Nichols, you know, the cycling YouTuber. Oh yeah, g'day Cam, what can I do for you, mate? Yeah, so I've been getting a ton of requests on the channel to do a Giant Propel review. Do you reckon I can get my hands on one for a few weeks? Just let me check with somebody here, all right? Hey, Terry. Yeah, Greg. I've got this dickhead YouTuber on the phone again. He's after a Giant Propel. <laughs> <laughs> what a dick. Yeah. Tell him his content shit too. Yeah, g'day Cam. Nah, sorry, we can't help you out there, mate. We just don't have any in stock, but um, all the best with it, all right? All right, mate, thanks anyway. Catch ya. But as a result of that, I have purchased this bike at the full recommended retail price from Giant Brisbane in Queensland, Australia, thanks to the COVID situation around the world. Following the first video I made about purchasing the Giant, I had quite a few comments under the video about the tires on the Propel, notably the giant tubeless Garvia, I think that's how you say it, AC1s, and the comments were not positive. However, for the purposes of this review, which we're gonna compare to the Windspace T1500 and also the Merida Reacto 6000, I thought if Giant wanna put crap tires on their bike, so be it, it's their own fault. We're gonna test the bike with their tires. And to be honest with you, I have never been one of those guys that gets super deep into the tire world. Maxxis High Road, 25 millimeter, these guys, rolling resistance speeds, amazing. 30s, 30s are the new 28s, I love 30s. Inner tubes, so 1990s. However, on Monday this week, I was riding my bike like this, and I ended up with a massive gash in my tire, which I had to frustratingly put a tube into the giant tubeless wheels as there was literally sealant everywhere. And I was very angry because I absolutely cannot stand changing tires, but it created a compelling event to change tires, Schwalbe ones, not even the pro ones. And then what happened? This happened on Monday. The very next day is the great Tuesday world champs here in Noosa, which I rode and I was like, holy crap, this bike feels so much better notably faster, notably holding speed in a draft better. So I was like, I need to test this giant propel back up my segment here, Gindia Drive on a low wind, beautiful Noosa day and see how it compares at 350 watts to the old giant with the crap tires, which I've done. So let's go back home and look at the data. So the bone I have to pick with giant I'll share that with you after we've looked at the data. And before we look at the data, I just wanted to thank today's video sponsor, being Squarespace. If we actually have a look at my wife's website here, which was built just recently, it's on a Squarespace platform and you can see how clean, simple, yet intuitive it is. And my wife, who's a non-techie, personally loves how easy it is to go into the back end, alter text, layouts, color schemes, etc., without needing any development skills. If you're keen to get a website off the ground, go to squarespace.com for a free trial. And when you're ready to launch, go to squarespace.com backslash camnichols to save 10%. See all the relevant details below in the video description area. Now, I know I've said this before. I'm gonna say it one more time because I keep getting criticized in the comments we all know this test is not perfect, but I still believe it gives us something. I've done this test many, many times now, and there is consistency there. And keep in mind, I'm using the same power output being these Asioma power pedals. 
Always doing it on a low wind day. The tyres are always pumped to 90 PSI, both front and rear across all bikes. So we have consistency. And I like this little climb because it is protected. Even though they're low wind days, it's good to have that protection. So let's look at the data. And this validates my anecdotal experiences. The Giant is now on average three to four seconds faster on this three and a half minute segment alone. In fact, the times are now closer to the wind space, which is where I originally thought this would land. Interestingly, before I swapped the tires over on the Giant Propel on the Saturday bunch ride where there's a lot of false flat incline sections, holding the wheel in a draft, I was really disappointed with the Giant Propel, blaming the weight of the bike as the causation. However, after riding the Giant on the Tuesday World Champs, after changing the tires over on similar terrain, this limitation of the Giant Propel Advanced One, feeling sluggish in a draft, particularly on a false flat incline, was completely eradicated. It was the crap Giant tires, which might I add, weigh roughly 330 grams a piece versus the Schwalb ones which i believe weigh from what i can find online 275 grams so that's a possible 110 gram savings there too did it work out to be that way when i weighed the bike again all right different tires what's going to happen here is it going to be anything exciting okay she's now under 5.6 so my big question to giant if they were listening out there they're probably not my bone to pick is why put heavy, endurancey, borderline crap tyres on what is a magnificent, fast aero machine for $5,300? It makes no sense. It's borderline oxymoronic. It's kind of like putting a stale banana on top of a cake instead of the cherry. Ah, oh, perfect. So, let's get into part two of this video. Rossi, come on. Come up for part two, mate. No, around this side. No, 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 no. So around this side, mate. Good boy, that's it, say hi. So before I share part number two, if you can give the video a like if you're enjoying it, that would be greatly appreciated, it helps the channel out. Now, I did debate on whether I shared this with you because I kind of feel like it's a personal reflection, but because it's regarding my channel and you watch my content and the people that normally watch part two of my content are my channel supporters, I did want to shine a light on this and share with you what I've been thinking. Yes, Holly, what's going on? Are you standing there watching me? It's kind of creepy. <laughs> and that is in recent times, I've recognized that particularly this year at times and probably even last year, I've gone for quantity over quality with my Friday vlog series. And the reason why I've done that is because I feel this strange pressure that only comes from me to publish content regularly on a Friday. And the fact is sometimes my weeks get consumed with the Road Cycling Academy or personal things pop up in my life and I don't have a really good video to share on a Friday and instead of not publishing a video on a Friday, I've almost pulled a topic out of thin air and published a video that I haven't been super proud about. I reckon there's probably a handful of videos this year where I've done that and in recent times, I haven't done that probably for the last five or six weeks. So this reflection, this moment of clarity came to me quite some time ago, but I wanted to start on a new path. Action speak louder than words before I actually share this with you. And I wanted to let you know that no longer, and I'm not going to pinpoint any videos here, no longer will I be publishing any content that I'm not super proud about sharing with you. And if that means less consistency, I would much rather be the YouTuber, the content creator that goes for quality over quantity. So I just wanted to share that with you, particularly by close channel supporters. As always, I really appreciate your support and I will catch you in the next video. <laughs> You're lying behind me. <laughs> Big strong chest. Oh, did you drop one? Did you drop one? <laughs>